welcome you uh, in our session about our capabilities for the digital uh, solutions and portfolios. I wish you can, can have a very pleasant time with our prestigious team. So um, just today, if you can go to the other slide, please. So today main session and agendas will be about, as I mentioned, the digital portfolio. We will take you through a journey for the challenges and also the operations uh, main, uh, uh, main portfolio. There is another session will be about driving the value out of data where we can also grow through our ABB ability capabilities, uh, ability, sorry, I mean ability capabilities with a concentration on Genix, our Genix solutions and also to see a main demonstration about this. The main other thing which will have a topic that we will be discussing is about advanced process control and optimization with Optimax uh, overview and also a demonstration. Uh, the final thing will be talking about cybersecurity and it will end with a Q&A session. So how today's structures will be? The uh, whole participants will be muted. The main uh, call duration or the session will be about 60 minutes. If you have any questions, uh, you are most welcome to present it first in the chat or even raise your hand and then we can even interrupt during the session. However, if it's not really answered during the session, we will have to collect these questions and answer them at the Q&A uh, session. Also, there will be a Slido, uh, uh, a Slido questions, you know, I mean, uh, during the uh, during the call. And we will uh, would like to have your interactions and feedbacks and to see also how we can best help you on this. If you go to the next uh, slide, please. So today I just am here glad also to introduce our main speakers. Uh, we start with uh, Mr. Ronan O'Sullivan. He's uh, the hub digital lead for a uh, region of India, Middle East and Africa for the energy industry division. We have also Mr. Vinod Ninan and he is the responsible for the directing the product for OIOT platform suit uh, from India, Middle East and Africa from the same division of energy industries. We have Mr. Biswa Das and he is a digital lead for pre-sales and also digital solutions engineering for the same region, India, Middle East and Africa. And we have Mr. Maurizio Barbino and he is uh, an advanced application manager for and a senior technical advisor based in Italy. And we have also Mr. Sanjeev uh, Sharma, and he is also from the cybersecurity sales teams for the region and for the energy industry division. If you can go to the second slide, please. OK, I can think now start the session. I hope you have uh, a pleasant time. So we will be starting the session now. I just give it to my colleagues to start. Ronan, here is the mic with you. You might have a really nice journey to talking to our customers. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Hanan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, salam alaikum. As Hanan mentioned, I'm Ronan O'Sullivan and I'm managing the digital business for India, Middle East and Africa for our energy industry customers. So if we take a, a, a global look at our industry and some of the overarching challenges uh, that we are all facing, we have the, these national and global uh, initiatives around climate change. So governments enforcing energy transition to really move away from fossil based and more into uh, green energy, uh, less carbon intensive emissions. If we look at the increased demand for sustainable operations, uh, as well as how to reduce CapEx and OpEx, while really building adaptability into new and existing industrial models for a really resilient energy future. And we have the, uh, the topic of renewable energy uh, entering into our overall energy mix. Renewable energy coming at a more, uh, a less costly than uh, the conventional power. So if we look at the entire energy industries, we're facing these headwinds and common challenges. So business efficiency is more necessary than ever. Industries are requiring new business models to stay relevant and competitive. And if we look at uh, the way to accomplish that, it's in order to overcome these challenges, we have to be more resilient. Uh, organizations need to adapt to using more software technologies 
as well as utilizing the value of your existing data. So next slide, please. So we're supporting you as our customers in some key areas. And what we're focusing on is around availability and sustainability. We're trying to drive more strate strategic decision making for you. We're uh, focusing on efficiency and profitability, trying to help you around running processes more efficient, efficiently and ultimately driving more profitability uh, for your business. And we have an, a common goal of reducing this environmental impact um, really by supporting optimized and dated decision making uh, for you. The next slide, please. So our commitment is to making a world of difference by empowering energy suppliers with software and services. We enable strategic decision making, resilience, and long-term profitability in an ever-changing environment. So next slide, please. So how can ABB help you? We at Energy Industries are bringing together domain expertise around oil and gas, around chemical and refining, and power and water. And we're building this domain expertise into the products and solutions that we can provide to you. And we have this under an umbrella that we call ABB Ability. Next slide, please. So as we look at applying digital across entire systems, we have a concept that we refer to as collaborative operations, where step one is really linking the disparate systems, breaking that traditional data silos and bringing your systems together. Once we have that data in a central location, we're performing analytics on top, on top of this in order to give you better decision making. Ultimately, we want to align with your specific KPIs to in order to be result driven and have result driven outcomes from this collaborative operations. So next slide, please. So we're seeing a trend in our industry of moving towards autonomous operations. Autonomous operations is a journey. We don't automatically get there. We start with the operator control, moving into remote control, integrated analytics, ultimately driving towards autonomous operations. So next slide. So that journey does not have to start tomorrow. It should start today. And we are already successfully enabling businesses to automate their processes based on the data provided by connected systems. Digital, digitalization for a better business outcome is our mission. So not necessarily replacing humans on this journey, but allowing systems to start to interact and start to allow for data-driven decision-making making happening. The next slide, please. So as we look at increasing the level of integration, the level of autonomy starts to increase as well. And ultimately, this is going to drive higher value for you at the enterprise level. The next slide, please. So where do we get started? And how can this strategy, uh, when we look at certain point solutions and building this up within you may already have existing systems maybe we have to complement those systems but how do we support you as we move towards this autonomous operation so first of all maximizing your your automation okay you can start taking an approach around an integrated electrical control and telecoms applying further advanced process control on your existing automation, 
as well as looking at one button startup or state based control. Why is this important? 40% of abnormal situations come from people. And so as we move up the value chain into remote operations, key element here around simulation, also allowing for subject matter experts to connect remotely through a collaborative operation center to support you. And as we continue moving up the value chain, we look at 40% of abnormal situations come from equipment failure. So having a strong asset performance management strategy enabling certain key technologies, such as our Genix APM uh, solutions, which you'll see today, as well as looking at services and asset lifecycle assessments as you move on. And as we continue moving up the value chain, we're looking at 20% of abnormal situations coming from process. So having better insights into your process is key. So next slide, please. So when we look at implementing all of these solutions and certain point solutions, some of the biggest challenges that we face are topics around cybersecurity, so risk management. So you'll see today some of our solutions and services that we really provide that foundational cybersecurity control and infrastructure as well as security, maintenance, and operations. Price pressures, having better insights into effective decision making, ultimately reducing cost, and looking at the energy transition. So how to manage this energy mix now to really increase your performance and look at meeting and exceeding certain KPIs that you have today. So next slide, please. So now let us take a look at our enterprise level solution, which can be deployed modularly and has certain value applications uh, within it. So with that, let's watch the video. Today, less than 20% of the data industrial companies generate is actually used. And only a fraction of that is analyzed to improve business. The potential is huge, especially for those that harness data from operations, engineering, and information technology. ABB Ability Genix is our key to unlocking this multidimensional data value, building on ABB's domain, digital, and automation expertise. ABB Ability Genix applies industrial analytics and artificial intelligence to simplify insights from asset to enterprise, to predict issues and accelerate decision making in a safe and cyber secure way. We believe that the place to start a data analytics journey is by building on existing technology. It's time to get more out of it. With the next generation of industrial analytics and artificial intelligence. ABB Ability Gen. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to my colleague. As you have comments and questions, please feel free uh, to type those into the chat. And let's take a closer look at how we can drive value out of your data. Over to you, Vinod. Thank you, Ronan. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, introduction also. Uh, so. Now that we have seen the product, uh, which is uh, the uh, ABB Ability Genix, um, uh, as a, uh, a, as part of the video, let's dwell into the details and see how this can help us in our analytics journey. If you see in any of the analytics or in any organization, 
if you see the industry statistics, which many of these analysts have uh, published, 73% of the data across the enterprise is not being used for analytics. Yes, we generate a lot of data on a day-to-day -day basis, but in fact, 73% of that data is not being used for analytics. And 40% of the productivity gain is through artificial intelligence integration. So it's not just talking about uh, descriptive analytics hereafter, but it's more talking about diagnostics. It's more talking about predictive. It's more talking about prescriptive analytics. And we see that 80% of the efforts on data integration is, is, is with the analytics project. That means that if you don't have the right tool in your environment, you unnecessarily spend most of your energy in, in the implementation cycle. And that's where the context of ABB Ability Genix comes into picture. Let's go to the next slide. What is ABB Ability Genix Analytics and AI Suite? In a summary, it is the enterprise grade, comprehensive and modular industry analytics or AI suite. The objective over here is not to sell a platform, but to derive business outcomes, which helps to ensure that we have seamless integration right from the shop floor for each of the assets to the enterprise level. It can be deployed on the edge or on-premise as well as multiple clouds. It can be Azure, AWS, or Google. Now, how does it work? It helps you to bring and contextualize the data which is coming from multiple systems, which could be the OT systems, the operational technology, the IT system, as well as the engineering data. It also helps you to use the pre-built analytics or the pre-built environment, which is available with, within, the, uh, within this whole platform. It helps you to also apply artificial intelligence or what we call as the machine learning technologies to resolve the analytics and optimize multiple challenges at the asset level or at the operation level or maintenance level or even at the business level. And what does it deliver? It helps you to give you multiple applications straight out of the box. So it's not just platform as we discussed earlier, it's also about asset performance management. It's also about operational intelligence. It's also about business analytics. And there are the right tools which are available in this to help you to do the self-service analytics. The business outcome which we want to generate over here is to ensure that we have a lower maintenance cost, improve the reliability and, the, and to lower the operational risk, extend the remaining useful life for any asset, and that's what we aim for on a day-to-day -day basis, lower the operational cost, and also ensure and increase the throughput, revenue, and profitability. Let's go to the next slide. With this product, which we call as the Genix Industrial Analytics and AI Suite, the main objective is to bring the data from an operational system, engineering system, and IT system together. The main glue which ABB comes brings into this systems is the strong domain expertise which we have over the past 100 plus years. And not only that, the strong install base which, is, which ABB already has. It helps us to do the data integration and contextualization in a much better way, store that information in a contextualized manner, do advanced analytics like the AI and the ML on top of it, and generate analytics for operational or asset or sustainability or even supply chain. Let's go to the next slide. So this Genix has a role to play for each and every user within the enterprise. So it helps you to have the complete stack in place, right from the shop floor, which is the L0 or the L1 level, right to the enterprise, which sits in the cloud. So you have data seamlessly moving across. It could be historical data. It could be batch data. It could be real-time or near real-time data. 
and helps you to ensure that you empower the diverse roles which is available as part of the complete uh, uh, plant uh, environment. Let's go to the next slide. So in a nutshell, what does it provide? It helps you to have an integration story because if you don't have an end-to-end -end solution, you may have to go to multiple uh, vendors and try to have the integration solution in place, the contextualization from another vendor or the modeling from another one and to optimize and deliver from another one. So here we are bringing an end-to-end -end flow of the data. So on the left-hand side, what you see over here is the multiple source systems which are typically available in any plant. We can have the right adapters to bring the data out of it, and these adapters can also be available as part of uh, the complete stack. And it's based on your requirement that we can deploy the right adapters in place. It can help you to bring the, uh, uh, the real-time data. It could help you to bring the historical data, or it can even help you to bring GIS, geographical information system, or even the engineering design data into a single environment and generate that data for your analytics. Now, once you have bringing the data from multiple adapters, you need to store this information and then contextualize. So when you talk about contextualization, we are talking about how do we identify what are those operating parameters which helps a particular asset. The asset could be a simple motor or a pump or a turbine or a heat exchanger. And you can bring this together, contextualize the data, understand how is the performance of each of these operating system and store that information in the right you know, industry cognitive model or what we call as the data storage. So in this, you can have a big data environment where you bring the data together and store based on your need. May it can be an asset need, it can be a maintenance and reliability need, or it can be a health safety or a supply chain or a business need. Now, how do we do, what do we do this with this data? That's where the analytics app studio comes, where you have the right tools to help you to do, create the visualizations, the dashboards, the UIs, or even the model fabric, which helps you to do the AIML analysis, where you go and create your regression models, the neural network models, the prescriptive models, or the predictive models, or even generate microservices though, so that it can act as a data hub, which can consume data from external sources and also give the data which you have stored from multiple sources to an external entity. And thereby, you have a multiple digital uh, app center which can help you to have multiple applications, store that information and solve your uh, enterprise level uh, 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 solutions. Let's go to the next slide. And so with once we have seen the platform and now we see from the solution side. And from the solution side, there are umpteen number of solutions which is there as part of this kitty. So the digital app center, which you on see, saw in the previous slide, could be uh, comprising of the operational integrity, which could uh, relate to your system anomaly detection or energy efficiency, or even the value stream mapping. Or from an asset integrity side, it can talk about asset performance management, which we are going to discuss in detail. And my colleague will show you the demo of that uh, in, in a short time from now. And even from an environment and safety side, you can uh, talk about process safety or regulatory compliance. From a supply chain side, you can talk about uh, logistic planning or say vendor performance. And even from a business excellence, you can talk about the OPEX, the CAPEX, or even the production cost optimization side. Thereby, this industry analytics AI suite, which we call as the Genix environment, helps you to bring data into have an, to have an enterprise-wide impact. And uh, thank you so much for this time. And I uh, hand it over to my colleague for the demonstration part. 
Hello, thank you, Vinod, and thank you, Ronan. It was really an interesting session, and I really thank you for your uh, dense information here. I would like to also repeat to the, our audience today and our customers that we are really most welcome, actually, for questions. So if you're going to have any questions, you can just post them. And um, if somehow we are, well, some uh, of your colleagues are not really able to attend today's session, don't worry, we are recording it anyway, and we will be sharing it with everyone. Uh, I will have to, uh, Biswa, I will have to break on a, on some Slido session, uh, some questions actually for our customers. So you can just join Slido by going to www.slido.com and then uh, type the hashtag ABB1. Or you can, if you have the application in your mobiles, you can just enter directly and just scan this uh, QR code. OK, so let us start the, um, the questions. Just a minute. OK. So the question here is, which of the following, which of the following uh, best fits your maintenance strategies? It's 100% uh, reactive, break fix only. Is it 80% reactive, break fix plus time based maintenance with some conditions monitoring? Is it 50% reactive with some break fix and mainly time based and condition monitoring and some predictive? Or is it 20% reactive with some break fix and mainly time based and condition monitoring and some predictive? Or is it 0% with fully adopted CM predictive and perspective? OK, I can see a lot of um, we can, I can see a balance here. I mean, results if you can see. OK. All right, majority is going to 50%. And some of them also for 100% or 80%, 20%. I would leave this to my colleagues actually to um, to comment on this. Is anyone um, want to comment on that results? Yeah, I can I can chip in here. So so this is Carl Watson. I'm the sales lead uh, for um, in our energy industry. Hi, Carl. How are you? Very good, thanks, Anand. Yeah, yes. so I'm yeah um, for the, for our APM solution. So that's that's great, um, and and that's consistent um, with other regions that that we work in, um, and it highlights the opportunity that we have in front of us to to transform your maintenance practices and reduce the number of um, um, emergency repairs that you need to do, which ultimately impacts your. Um, um, your your productivity. So so uh, Biswa will now talk about that. So this this is a, a great response, much appreciated, and it's um, yeah it does highlight the opportunity in front of us. Okay, thank you so much, Carl. I think by having this, we can just go to the second session. So Biswa, the mic is with you. Uh, Biswa, you are not audible. I think you are. You should mute. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Let me share my screen. Uh, thank you for joining this call. And uh, OK, hope you are able to see my screen. Yes. OK, so this is the ABB Ability Genix uh, you are able to see on your screen. So that is the instance. If you can see this is a instance hosted in a um abb cloud so you can uh, i think uh, one thing i would like to touch upon here before getting into the apm that uh, already ronan talked about that what are the different kind of industries that we are serving today uh, in the energy side uh, you can see oil and gas refineries gas processing chemicals petrochemicals waters and all power generation obviously in the process side also metals mining pulp and paper so why i am showing this because this is um, will um, also show you that how uh, we are uh, as a global team of abb that we are working across the globe with different kind of customer different kind of industries how we are bringing all this knowledge into this product uh, the platform and the solution that we are making that we are going to see in next uh, 10 minutes uh, so uh, I think uh, with this, I'll get into the digital app center where you can see multiple applications already 
pre-built available and uh, where uh, there is an option also where we can work with you uh, to develop some of these application. And today's discussion will focus more around the asset performance management, where obviously the predictive maintenance uh, uh, is one of the factors where we have seen that uh, the uh, poll says that the 43% it is uh, more uh, around the reactive uh, maintenance. So that is how we see something failing and then we work on it and uh, maybe some condition monitoring is already in place. Uh, so this is uh, the Genix APM, the asset performance management suite out of uh, the Genix platform. So where you can see different modules available. And uh, so here uh, there are three different models that is Perform 360, Predict 360 and Assist 360. Let me jump into the first into the predictive maintenance side of it. Uh, so this is the Predict 360 where you can see all the AIML model based predictive maintenance models are running on the live data and it is generating the events that you are able to see on your screen when this event got generated and what is the asset criticality, the numbers, the tags, the description on which equipment, which is the class of equipment and what kind of failure mode that is also getting identified. So telling that we have the asset models library that is already embedded into this application and also that can be customized uh, to the requirement of uh, different uh, customer uh, premises, the assets and all, and then you can see uh, the users. Uh, so the operators, the engineers will be able to analyze these events. Uh, so and also categorize them, whether they see a credibility into it or they might be aware that there is some something going on, so they might ignore it also. So that type of facility is already available. So from here, they also can get into the analysis that how many actually the faulty assets are there and they can get into the individual assets to see that what is happening in that particular asset. They will be able to analyze that uh, the performance of the assets on the top of it. Here you can see a list of uh, uh, assets are coming up. Then let me select one of the asset and you can see there are various events are getting generated or alerts because of this predictive maintenance models that is running. So predictive maintenance models are AIML based and also there is rule based also available in some certain condition. If that is need to be done on a condition monitoring basis, that also can be the tool is flexible enough to adapt to that requirement also. OK, so here you can see if we want to analyze any kind of uh, particular event, let me see to bring you something on the top of it. Uh, yeah, maybe a smaller window and a bearing failure and let me see if I am. Yeah, so so many events are getting generated, so there can be multiple uh, models that can be applied. So where Binod has talked about uh, the architecture where we have the model fabric within Genix, so where uh, the, all these models are getting stored and we can apply those models. So let me see that if it is able to bring uh, some of this analysis on the top of it. So that is where you can see there are the changes in the behavior uh, of the equipment we are able to see here and that is where uh, the users can analyze these changes and uh, take decisions on the top of it and also it has a library of recommendations which can be also added and customized over uh, uh, as you start using it. So this is a kind of like it goes for a uh, recommendation. So where you can see uh, different kind of recommendations are already in place and also you can see that what activities has been already done here and we can also trigger a notification uh, or a work order uh, to a SAP uh, or a, uh, any other uh, CMMS system uh, so that the, uh, the action can be taken from a, a maintenance or a inspection side of it. So this is how uh, you can see a predict 360. I think uh, uh, let me jump into uh, so uh, to the next uh, module which talks about the perform 360 and here we can see uh, the performance uh, monitoring workplace. So where we see the performance of the asset 
and uh, to just to talk about this, you have all the asset location hierarchy that is already embedded into it, and you ha can have multiple plants, multiple regions already through the equipment level, or uh, all this uh, can be contextualized to a level where we can get into the details, and we can here we can see what is happening in the current state. So is the performance of that particular asset is going wrong or uh, there is a health of that asset is going wrong so and we can analyze that in uh, performance of that particular asset we can compare with different kind of limits we have set so this tool allows uh, let's say the um, maintenance engineer to uh, add his own uh, uh, basically the limit to see that where the indication is going maybe a process analyst will apply his own limits to see that how the tag will is behaving and this is already it's a self sent uh, you can say self service based and you can see also what are the deviations that are happening so you just put your alarm labels here and you see what are the deviations i have seen for last 24 hours or last 48 hours and also from a so i think when we uh, we are analyzing the um, complete uh, performance of the asset so it is also very critical uh, not only just to see from an operation or the process parameter side also from a strategy side that what is the current maintenance is going on how is the failures happening so because that is also very critical and also to see that what are the different kind of events that is happening uh, in this particular equipment over the year so that we can see and that gives a complete uh, 360 view of the asset so that people uh, the users the managers they can take proper action on that tag. You also can see a management of change. If there is any changes happening across in this particular equipment, that kind of information also can be captured here so that you can get all the uh, uh, basically all the information together uh, so, uh, so that you can take a data driven decision making. So these are the different kind of parameters. So just to highlight that we have asset templatized uh, or parameterized uh, system where you can actually take an asset template and uh, it can be multiplied mapping to 50 uh, type of uh, 50 number of equipment in your instance. And uh, so this becomes uh, easier implementation for all your uh, requirement. And also you can have uh, your documentation repository of it. So I'm not getting into the configuration side. I think uh, I am touching upon the top of this, but uh, definitely there are a lot of things are there already in place uh, to make as uh, to fle flexibly run this and to add up to new asset classes, uh, to add new asset categories, uh, different uh, OEMs, not only ABB, you can go for other OEMs, different class of equipment, and also uh, to scale it from one unit to another unit to one plant to another plant. So that is how. Uh, this will uh, benefit the whole gamut of the um, in, uh, the asset that is already installed and running in your premises. And with this, uh, let me jump into the Assess 360. Uh, so uh, this is where uh, actually this is one of the tools which uh, helps in asset life assessment of uh, uh, the aging assets where you can do, you must be doing a lot of services on the top of it where you can see all these um, um, analysis that is being done, you are taking expert advice, even ABB is also doing those. So we, uh, this tool captures all that information together and also makes it uh, evergreen because leaving that inspection program there and doing some, then you leave it. But other, but what did uh, the Genix APM does is once you enroll here, and add that asset and then you can check also the performance side of the predictive maintenance side of it, reliability inspection side of it, what we have seen already here. So these are, you can see different kind of projects that has been taken up to analyze different sections of a plant or uh, the asset where you can see how many projects has been taken up, what are the recommendations that is coming out of the inspection and uh, the uh, service, um, the life of the um, inspection of that particular aging assets and what are the recommendations. Also, it helps you uh, to see that what is the, how much is the risk and where I should put uh, my uh, effort or resources so that I can reduce this high risk. Okay, so that uh, my risk will be getting minimized and also I can see that how much I should invest 
in next five years, 10 years, so that I can see that there is a capex uh, that I am using, but uh, that is used for a purpose and there is enough um, means uh, uh, work has been identification has been done and that is getting in line with the program that has been set. So here we can see all these project related details. So where uh, you have already identified. So let me see, show you one. We have uh, done this for one of the refineries. Uh, let me just pull it. Yeah. OK, so this is uh, uh, for a particular feed water uh, the heat, uh, heater, I, I think. Uh, so here you can see all the design information, constructional operational information, then historical information, uh, and the inspection philosophy, the inspection history, and you can also I didn't see if any leaks are happening or that is getting captured for last five years, four years. So what is the impact of those uh, events that is generated because of some integrity issues in these assets? Here we can track the thickness of that particular uh, asset and uh, you can see that is how a thickness is already uh, measured and uh, we can calculate uh, and also see what is the corrosion rates and I can if we select uh, one of this um, uh, inspection points so where you can see both long term and short term side so it is not just about the inspection program you have checked something but on a real time basis also if there is and the information can be extracted and integrated to the system on a short term basis. Also, we can track the performance and uh, assess the integrity of these assets. So here, uh, Biswa, also, sorry, yeah. it's just because we're running out of time. So I think if we can just conclude about the session and then go to the second uh, topic. OK, OK. Uh, so this is the risk matrix. Uh, so where you can add a uh, risk matrix into it and uh, this is all about uh, the Genix APM. I think there is much more uh, to show, but uh, if there is any interest, we would like to have a detailed discussion on this. Thank you. OK. Thank you so much, uh, Biswa. I think that was really nice uh, presentation. Uh, I think we are. It's our time now to go to our next slide. So. Um, Or I'm sorry, I think we need to go to the second session. Mauricio, sorry, I think this is your session at this point. So the mic is with you. Go ahead. OK. OK, next slide. All right, Optimax. OK, uh, for uh, good morning or good evening uh, to everybody. So we speak about advanced process control and optimization. Uh, Optimax is a, a system that is able to provide both. And uh, real-time optimization means that uh, the system is able to decide which is the best optimal operating point uh, among uh, several units or plants, uh, taking into account uh, economical uh, uh, objectives uh, and uh, uh, also the prices, also capability constraints and like this. While uh, the advanced process control has the scope to provide, uh, uh, to reach this uh, specific uh, optimal operating point, uh, taking into account the dynamics of the plant, uh, taking into account uh, the safety constraints. Next slide. Uh, we are just uh, two interesting applications of advanced process control in order to understand uh, uh, really the benefits of the solution. Uh, the first is a concern in the combustion. Combustion, uh, optimal combustion means uh, to increase the efficiency, means uh, to reduce the emissions, uh, and one, uh, this is one of the most interesting applications uh, inside of the power generation. Another interesting application is uh, to increase the flexibility of the plants due to the fact that there is a large impact of the renewables. That means uh, to increase the dynamics of the plants, to reduce uh, the timing for the startup and to reduce the minimal technical load. Next slide, please. 
This is an application for uh, the powerhouse in a, a big industrial plants. So in this case, we have just a, a combined production of steam and power, and we wanted to optimize this, deciding which boiler, which turbines are to be used, and of course, to um, take into account of the constraints in pressure readers and so on. And this is an application that is really interesting by economical point of view because we have a return of investment that is a typical lower than one year. Okay, so we have just one demo that is a freely inspired well from a specific real case, and I leave it to my colleague Francesco Ghiotto to to show this demo. Francesco, please. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, I will start uh, sharing my screen. Uh, okay, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, yes, first please. of all, uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon also from my side. Apologies, uh, but my webcam is uh, not working today, so I will just uh, talk. Uh, so here we have um, a representation, a demo representing uh, an application of uh, Optimax on a complex uh, steam network. So here we are simulating uh, the entire automation pyramid that Maurizio showed you in the, pre in, the pre in the first slide. Basically, we have the DCS and we have built uh, an APC plus RTO layer on the top of it. So I'm not spending too much time uh, on the DCS. I will directly jump uh, to show you Optimax uh, web uh, interface. So basically, we have a complex steam network with uh, several uh, boilers and several turbines. So just uh, a small overview, there are two pressure headers one high pressure header and one medium pressure header down here. Uh, each of these square represents uh, a boiler. And uh, as you can uh, imagine, uh, in a complex steam network, uh, boilers uh, are built in general uh, in different period of time. So they have different operating ranges and the operating ranges, they are this number in blue and they are also editable. Uh, and basically each of these boiler has uh, a different efficiency curve and also if you see the legend of the fuel used so some of these boiler they are natural gas boilers some other they are oil boilers so the the situation here is pretty complex because we also have uh, three steam turbines so these are three steam turbines uh, so you can imagine that uh, RTO is uh, reading uh, the actual costs of the raw materials. And uh, these costs, uh, they can come from an energy broker, for example, or they can also be manually changed by, by the process department, for example, in your plant. And according to these costs, the economical, the most economical way of uh, of managing the steam network will change okay so here we have an overview and for every boiler we have the actual production in black and uh, the optimal production calculated by the real time optimization is uh, here represented in green okay uh, i will jump to the monitoring display which i think it's uh, pretty interesting so since we don't have a lot of time i have already started with the optimization in uh, active mode but it's also possible first to start uh, with what we call advisory mode and only after go to closed loop control okay so you can see here at the top the production of the boilers that is uh, of course changing because we are writing some some set points but what's what's pretty interesting is this curve down here because uh, in uh, blue basically you have the ac actual cost of production for the steam against uh, in green the calculated optimal cost according to the prices that we have in this moment okay and uh, how far uh, we are from the optimal uh, load allocation is indicated in these bar charts okay so basically this is telling us how far every boiler or every turbine down here is far from the optimal 
uh, load allocation. So it, this is saying basically that we are 73 tons of steam far from the optimal production. OK, and if you have a, a close look at this number, you will see that they are slowly decreasing since we are implementing uh, this set point on on the DCS. And uh, what, you, what you can see if I go back to the overview tab, is that uh, the scenario can also change, for example. So we can have, for example, the oil that becomes uh, less expensive than the natural gas. I mean, this might seem uh, a bit uh, easy, maybe, but you will see that uh, if I now that I changed the price, uh, the suggested oil production here is to maximize the oil boiler, which is the first one, and to minimize the natural gas boilers. OK, but what's maybe even more interesting is uh, if you change uh, the electricity price. Now the turbines were still maximized because it was still making sense uh, to have maximum production of uh, in the turbines. But if you see now, it makes more sense uh, to use the pressure reduction valve uh, instead of uh, of producing electricity because uh, we have a spray valve after the PRV and this will allow us uh, to work more efficiently. And if we go back to our monitoring uh, display, I can show you that every time, of course, you change the price, the slope of the production of the boiler changes because it changes the optimal uh, load allocation and if i show you the our cost curve you can see that every time there is a change in the prices you also have of course a step in both the actual cost of production and the optimized cost of production but immediately here you see that the blue line starts to decrease because the apc layer underneath is reading this optimal allocation and is trying to always go to the optimal position okay uh, of course i mentioned that um, here it's also possible to work in uh, in advisory mode so like it's also it's possible to change this uh, switch and work uh, directly in uh, in open loop and not uh, in closed loop and last thing that i can show you today is that i mentioned that it's possible to change uh, the efficiency curves and uh, the efficiency curves they are in uh, represented with some parameters here but of course it's possible to have uh, different uh, curves in according to the specific case and the uh, last interesting display are these Sankey diagram so i will show you just the last one which is the entire steam network uh, mass balances so it's possible Bra, to yeah. Yes, I believe that we must uh, stop because otherwise there is no time to. to yeah, 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 yeah. I was finishing just uh, in uh, yeah, yeah, in my time. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it was just uh, to show the Rosanki diagram. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, everyone. I think what we are going to do right now is just going to the next slide of sessions, which will be about um, uh, APM. And then uh, we will just after that go to the other one. I think, um, no, we're still in, in ABB1, so I will just be sharing the same screen and then we will go ahead. Sorry. So we can go through this ABB1. OK, again, I mean, go to slido.com and then actually scan the QR code so we can go for the uh, next slide. question is what which is your main target? Is it a uh, pure energy cost reduction, a combined heat energy cost reduction, an emission abat uh, abatement or a production water and chemical ETC increasing? So you can start now interacting. OK, I can see the I mean, until now, the main uh, the main answers is on production. The main as a main target. 
uh, combined heat energy cost reduction is there too. So until we have some final answers on this, I think if you want to share anything on this, Maurice, you. If you have any comments on the on the results. Yeah, it's uh, interesting because there is uh, a special focus on the increase in web production uh, in other cases, in other uh, uh, sectors or reasons. Uh, there is uh, a more focus on uh, cost uh, reduction, especially in this moment. OK, but it's of course depending on the specific uh, market. Yeah. OK, thank you so much. I think we can go to the second uh, question. OK. So the question is, which solution do you see most suitable and profitable in your case? Is it advanced process control or real time optimization or maybe both? OK, I can see that somebody answered. I mean, many people answered as both. So I think, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> OK, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. OK, I think this is for the Slido. I think now we can just go to the next session for the cybersecurity. Thank you, Anand. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Thank you. Hello and good morning to all of you. My name is Sajeev Sharma. I look after cybersecurity sales. So as you have seen in today's session, uh, the ABB team has given you a glimpse of what is there in digital ABB ability digital offerings. Our emphasis on digitalization, optimization, and deriving value from the data which comes from the assets and the processes, and taking not timely decisions using our Genix AI suite. So, uh, if you have any comments, you can just put it there in the chat window. Uh, what I would like to emphasize here is a robust end to end cybersecurity ecosystem will ensure that the business continuity is maintained. And, and just to take this thought forward, I want to share some thoughts around key OT perspectives regarding cyber and what is the ABB approach with our solutions. So uh, please go to slide board. Yeah, yeah so let's take a look at uh, some of the risks which are faced by purely OT companies. So if you see some of the risk factors, uh, these are inherent to OT companies because of the sheer distributed nature of the systems and the complexities which are there on the asset side and the process side. Then we have you know, uh, issues around lack of enough visibility on the security side. Lack of uh, awareness in some cases, and all this was also because of insufficient expertise at the right levels for OT cybersecurity. Now, what this means is it becomes extremely lucrative for a bad actor and also attractive to attack those companies. And what happens when such an incident occurs? There is a tremendous risk on health and safety of the key personnel as well as the general public sometimes. Not to mention about environmental damage. Uh, there are production losses which in turn cause revenue losses. What this means is it, it causes an erosion in the trust and that is something that we all need to avoid. Please move forward. So here is one, one uh, survey result which was published by SANS Institute in 2021. Uh, this is a survey on OT cybersecurity professionals looking into what are the key concerns. And if you see more than 50% of the respondents voted in favor of the topmost concern for them was maintaining continuity. And then there is also the threat on the cyber physical systems. If you look at the threat vectors, unsurprisingly, it is ransomware, followed by the threat coming from nation, nation state cyber attacks. A look at some of the risks that uh, are on the sector wise risk. Energy sector ranks very high. On the list of sectors which are highest at risk, followed by water utilities and critical manufacturing. So these are the topmost findings which are coming from this survey and, and you will find some key insights moving forward. Please go on. Right, so speaking of ransomware, now what happens uh, when, when an incident happens? specifically on ransomware is that the cost of treating that ransomware keeps on increasing. Now it was about about 100K and plus few years back and now it has become almost three times. It's more than 300K. And if you have seen the recent uh, colonial pipeline incident, there are reports that about $5 million were paid to the hackers. 
So we are looking at if you look at the right side, there are there are costs which are not just the ransom cost. There are also costs around staff over time, about new equipments to be put in, communications to be put in place, uh, losses in revenue, and also in terms of you know, some lawsuits which can be triggered based on the criticality of the attack. So all these costs need to be factored in when we look into the holistic costs of a cyber incident. Move forward, please. So it comes to what does ABB take an approach towards OT cybersecurity and and our 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 cybersecurity principles are focused on people, process, and technology to ensure effectiveness. Let's take a small illustration here. Uh, let's say there is a production facility which is you know uh, eyed by some bad actor externally. What it says is that if you have the foundation controls in place, which takes care of your backup, your updates, patches, anti-malware, having recovery systems in place. Most of the threats can be mitigated at this level itself. This is the first line of defense, but that's not sufficient. You might also have you know, vulnerabilities which can be you know, uh, eyed upon by external actors. So that is where the service player comes in. Having rigorous maintenance, the protection levels can improve the effectiveness by up to 85%. Moving forward, what also happens is that there are still some kind of risks, residual risks which are left out in the system. This can be tackled by having the operations into place. And ABB Ability Cybersecurity Event Monitoring is one such service which, which can detect attacks coming from external uh, actors or even from any internal unintended vulnerability or a bad actor because of some uh, loophole in the process. But these can also be detected and thwarted. So what, what it gives is that this multi-level defense mechanism helps in detecting threats and taking necessary proactive steps so that your production facility is always secure. And that gives you peace of mind. Move forward, please. So a little glimpse about uh, what the ABB cybersecurity portfolio looks like. Now it is made up of on the top right, you see foundational security controls. It has got... Uh, security services, security operations, and all this is built on top of our proven, well-established security blueprints. So if you see left to right on the assist phase, there are fingerprint services and risk assessment services, which help you identify any gaps. Now, once those are done, we have the plan phase, where our experts will work alongside your teams and try to mitigate those risks. In the implementation phase, you have the Foundational controls coming from malware protection to security control updates, backup, uh, recovery systems, going right up to allow listing and asset inventory. And, and quite recently, we have introduced one more product called a cybersecurity workplace, which will help you automate many of these tasks. So that, that helps in compliance, that helps in productivity. And all the while, our service teams will ensure regular maintenance of, of your systems so that they remain up to date. We also have got in the detection phase, the network monitoring and the event monitoring services. This helps you identify events and this can be treated by having the expert teams coming from the security operation center who can have the proper incident response. And this could be managed exclusively by ABB or in combination with your teams, your own teams. So what our portfolio is aligned to bring down your risk profile. And that is what we want to emphasize here. And, and that brings me to the end of this Slide deck. So, thank you, and welcome. Any comments, questions? Thank you very much, Sanjeev. So, in summary, first of all, thank you very much for your valuable time today. I think next slide. There's a tremendous opportunity for you to drive value out of your existing data. And ABB is here to support you that with that. It doesn't necessarily mean just integration of ABB systems. We are able to integrate your IT systems, your OT systems, and even engineering technology systems in order to bring them together in, a, in an automated uh, fashion, ultimately reducing uh, the spend that you have on various data integration objectives, as well as your overall uh, en energy transition topics around your data transition topics and your digital transformation journey. So next slide, please. 
So today we focused more on the operational integrity and the asset integrity and cybersecurity, but we certainly would love to do a deep dive into these specific areas as well as other areas, environmental and safety, uh, supply chain, uh, business excellence. So with that, I'll conclude the session and please reach out to your local account manager or any of the ABB team that is on this call here today and have a great and safe rest of the day. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Ronan. I think we will just have to also, I mean, just have one question at this point. It's from Saudi Aramco, and maybe you can answer on it. It's just saying that I am interested in data analytics and AI solutions for electrical systems and equipment like transformers, switch gears, motors, and UPS. Does ABB have such solutions? Absolutely. And so ABB has historically started out as an electrical company and we have evolved into an automation company. We have involved into uh, measurement and analytics, uh, motors, uh, robotics, and so on and so forth. So to answer your question directly, absolutely, we can support you with your electrical uh, system needs uh, from even a condition monitoring perspective to an advanced analytics perspective. Uh, there are many areas that we can support you with. So please, reach out uh, to your local account manager or any of the ABB team. Thank you, Ronan. I think by answering these questions, we are closing the session. And I wanted to thank all our ABB, ABB speakers and colleagues actually to contribute to the session today. Thank you so much, Ronan. Thank you so much, everyone. And I wanted also to thank our customers to join and have a really nice interaction with us for today's session. Uh, I just want to remind you that this session is recorded and it will be sent to all of you. Also, if you have other colleagues will be interested also to uh, watch it, they are most welcome. We will be sending the links and also the presentations. Contacts of the speakers of today will also be provided for any further questions of clarifications. Um, again, thank you so much. May you have a blessed day. And uh, from now on, happy Ramadan, Ramadan Kareem for everybody. And wish, and we will see you soon in another webinars. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining in. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all, Ramadan Kareem.